All right, here's a video about doing stainless steel cable rails. We ordered this stuff from Amazon, Mazuta brand, where they are turnbuckles that are stainless steel. We ordered seven packs of these, we needed a bunch of them. So that's what you get. We're gonna show you how we do these things and how to make them look pretty good. So what's the advantage of using cable railings? Well, number one is you can see through them really well and that works out well here. You can see that mountain view behind me. Number two, maintenance. Uh, you don't have to paint or stain them. They're stainless steel so they won't rust and you can tighten them up again later if they do loosen up with the turnbuckles. Number three, they just look cool. They give your house a nice modern look, really slick, clean finish. Okay, and if you're wondering about the cost, it was $693 from Amazon for 90 linear feet of railing on this house. And that breaks down to under $8 a linear foot, which is still not really cheap. We will have some extra cable. That got us 800 feet of the stainless steel cable, eighth inch, which is more than we need, but uh, it was just what we had to buy. All right, so we're out on the deck. Uh, you can see this comes with two types of ends. This is the turnbuckle end that will tension the cable. That's cool. Okay, and it's got a little hole there that you can stick something through and turn it so you don't scratch it with like pliers. Uh, this is the fixed end, and I'm gonna put this in all the locations that are more visible because it's smaller. So like out here, we'll do this end, uh, and then against the house over here, where it's less visible, we'll do the turnbuckle end. Okay, if you're new to cable railings, this is a turnbuckle, and this is a pretty cool piece of hardware. Uh, it actually is the part that tensions the cable. So how it works is it's got threads coming into this part from both ends, and these threads are threaded opposite so that if you turn this part in one direction, it actually pulls the threads in from both sides at the same time, giving you tension. Then you can lock these nuts down like so, and it will keep it under tension. It'll lock it into place. So that's very cool. So before you go lock the cables in, before you crimp them in there, make sure now to leave some thread showing on each side like that before we crimp the cable so that you have some room to tighten this down and actually take the slack out of the cable. That's very important. Yeah, wasn't there a Ninja Turtle to use these things? Michelangelo. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's talk about the spacing on these. We're gonna do three and a half inches on center for each of these. You can see we've pre-drilled actually for each end already. And if you go from center to center on each of those, three and a half, seven, 10 and a half. The code is four inches. A four inch ball can't fit anywhere through your railing. That's the code. But three and a half is even better. So it looks good. And that's what we usually do is three and a half inches on center with the cables. You can see we've got our nice pre-painted, pre-drilled even posts put in. And we made these. Well, I say we, my brother Jamie actually made these. He welded them and uh, primed them and painted them and installed them. So I'm really coming in for the after the fact, the easy fun part, installing the actual cables. All right, here's a tool we bought on Amazon as well. And this is a hydraulic crimper. You can see as I pump this, close it and crimps the cable into the ends. And we actually modified this thing. Uh, we have a longer handle that we can put on this as well to really get a lot of power to crimp these things. It is Mazuta brand as well. And that's how you crimp the cables into the ends, which is important. All right, you'll notice we have also pre-stained this post. You don't wanna to have to try to paint or stain around a bunch of these ends. That'll really drive you crazy. So uh, on this end, it's wood. So we're gonna install it with these stainless steel wood screws that it came with. Okay, it comes with these. Uh, if you need to screw to metal, you gotta buy your own, which I did. I'm gonna show you that. Cut to that clip. All right, we're back. Here we go. So I've pre-drilled these. Oh, <laughs> get that out of the way. There's one. Uh, we just gotta do, I think, about 140 total. So one done. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Amazon.com. All right, side note, I ordered these yesterday and I paid like 35 extra bucks and they arrived at my house today, which is one day I ordered them and they showed up. I don't even know how they do that, but that's handy. Yeah. All right, let's go to some of these turnbuckle ends on the other side. Also got these pre-drilled three and a half inch centers. Ah. 
snug it up, don't strip it out. That's always the key. Oh, reverse. One. <laughs> this is gonna be a long day. <laughs> okay, here's some of these installed. And the reason we chose this kind is that you can go at any angle. Like if you need to go downstairs or upstairs, these are adjustable and you can use the same hardware on the stairs as in the flats. All right, and to get all the holes pre-drilled perfectly, we made a little template out of quarter inch steel and we pre-drilled it with the holes in the right locations for our turnbuckles all the way up and down the post. And we just laid this against our posts and did all of our pre-drilling so we know it's gonna turn out just right. All right, now we're on to some turnbuckles going against our metal posts. And uh, we're using these Tech 5 self-tappers that I bought this morning at Asheville Hardware. And uh, basically we pre-drilled small holes. They're not quite big enough and these will cut the hole to fit the rest of the way in. I'm just using an impact driver here. Go, baby, go. That's it. Those things work great, actually. Tech 5. Ready? Boom, you out. All right, a side note, when you get done with these, make sure you get all this little metal scrap off your deck because it will rust and stain these deck boards and look horrible. So as soon as we're done, we're gonna vacuum all this crap up. All right, let's check this out. In this corner here, we've got a prowl, a 15 degree point, and we did two posts. That's so we didn't have to change the orientation of our pieces to like how Ray's holding it. We could keep them like that because this face is parallel to the opposite post as well as this face of this post is parallel to the opposite post there. So that's how we did these corners so that we could keep this hardware uh, vertical mount the same way as the rest of it. All right, we got the same thing going on in this corner with two posts because that is not a 90 degree angle. That's uh, coming out 90 and then 15 degrees past 90 there. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine rows for a 36 inch high rail is what we got. So since we have nine rows for each straight section of railing, we need nine sets of these things. So we have a section here to there, another section from there to the corner, another section from the corner to that corner way down there and so on. So that's how you figure how many of these turnbuckles you need. All right, if you're still watching this video, sorry, but now you get to see the cables actually go in. Let's do that. All right. Whoa. All right, here's a look at the cable we're dealing with. Eighth inch stainless steel braided cable. We're gonna start by feeding this through the middle post on our section, which is the hard part because we've only drilled these holes just slightly bigger than the cable. And it's kind of painted in there, so we don't wanna drill them any bigger. All right, so we've got it through there, going out to the fixed end. I'm coming, I'm coming. There you go. <laughs> oh, I'm on the cable. <laughs> hey, what's the problem? You're on the cable. <laughs> okay. So we're gonna feed it all the way in there. Now we crimp it in. All right, so that's what that looks like once it's crimped. That cable will be held in there very well. All right, we've pulled this cable across to the turnbuckle end, and this is gonna take two sets of hands. Somebody's gonna hold the cable end to the turnbuckle while another person crimps it. So uh, we're gonna get someone else to run the video camera so I can help you. So first we're gonna cut the cable to length to where it goes into the turnbuckle. Booyah.
All right, I'm gonna insert the cable here and hold some tension on it while Ray crimps it. Yes. All right, we got that crimped in here now. I'm gonna use this little Allen key to go through this hole and we're gonna tension it, I think, uh, this way? Yep, that's tensioning it. Really, it doesn't take much if you hold it kind of in tension like I did to start with. Wow. Yeah, it's getting tight. How tight should we go? That's probably plenty tight. Banjo. All right, now I'm just gonna run those nuts in and we'll come back with a real wrench and snug those tighter later. Uh-oh, there we go. All right, there it is, one cable done out of like 100. Uh, <laughs> so the hardest part is to get it fed through this other hole. It's kind of like one of those games at the dentist's office, like getting the horseshoes apart. Oh, I got it. <laughs> that was like five minutes later. <sighs> okay, bingo. Nailed it. Okay, day two. Uh, it's pouring rain, by the way. You can see that. Uh, we're gonna get on rain suits and try to finish these rails anyway. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> what are you maniacs doing? You look like we belong on Deadliest Catch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look like it. Time to get suited up. Yep. It's got a little funk to it. This thing smells super funky. <laughs> or maybe that's me, I don't know. No, it's been <laughs> in that box for two years. All right. There's so many cables. Just like the guy on the fish stick box. Gordon's fish sticks? Look <laughs> exactly like that guy. All right, guys, thanks for watching our video. That's a wrap on this cable railing. Only thing left to do now is do the worm across this deck. <laughs>